Hello guys. So today um, this is a very late new tutorial because um, I was working on my own project and that took a whole lot of time. Uh, but now it's in rendering stage, so I can relax a bit and uh, show you guys what I have found in these months, uh, in this very long time. So uh, today I'm going to show you how you can uh, uh, achieve good depth of field in EV. And uh, as you guys will most know um, that uh, EV does not have good uh, depth of field uh, in the foreground. Uh, in the background, it does a pretty good job, but it uh, really messes it up in the foreground. Uh, let me show you what it, what I mean. Uh, okay, so this is a very basic scene, uh, just uh, a ground uh, which is displaced by a displace modifier, and I've used the textures to do that. So nothing very fancy, and uh, this is a cube, and I will just show you if I put put it in the background, and now I will uh, turn on the depth of field so I will select my camera and in the camera panel uh, I will enable depth of field and you can see what it does it enables the depth of field and I have set all these settings um, already so uh, you can see that it does a very good job of uh, focusing on a particular uh, distance and uh, then blurring the background and you can see the uh, cube there has been blurred uh, very uh, very nicely and uh, it uh, does a very good job and it is photorealistic but however in the background uh, you cannot much see but if you can see here it is uh, it is not quite right and if I just uh, pull it into the foreground you can see uh, very clearly what I'm talking about <laughs> look what is this <laughs> this is not how a camera is supposed to work this is not acceptable uh, so I've tried to fix this problem and so I went online and uh, saw how people uh, tried to fix this but I couldn't so uh, find anything useful and I couldn't find a true solution basically. Uh, it is a, a major limitation of EV and uh, so today I have tried to uh, fix this and I have made a node group which I will show you in just a minute. So the way this works is we achieve this depth of field in the post processing in this compositing tab, um, not in the viewport and not in the render. So I'll just disable depth of field and uh, in the in the description I have put a link to my uh, to a blend file which will provide you with the node group that I have created myself. So uh, go ahead and download that. And in the compositing tab we have. Um, we have our render layers and uh, uh, you might think that uh, we will work with this depth um, pass but no we will use a mist pass and uh, we will have to render it again I think yes so first we will just uh, append our <laughs> node group which I have created uh, it is called I have very fashionably <laughs> named it uh, ddepth <laughs> So um, this is not the file that I'm talking about, but you will get it in that. So this is the note called D depth and I have appended it and in the, you will find it in the group section and uh, here it is. Now it, uh, how it works is if you open it up, you can see that um, it does a, a very simple job of uh, separating the background and foreground and uh, uh, the background uh, is blurred nicely and it doesn't require very much work but the foreground um, we have to detect the edges and blur them and it's all very <laughs> technical but uh, that's what I have done and uh, uh, I will show you um, how it works so we will render our scene without the depth of field and uh, we will do this and it will very quickly give us a good render as you can see um, I think I should move it a bit here okay okay so we have done this and uh, in the compositing tab we have a uh, mist um, uh, enabled and we will plug this into the mist of our node group which will give us something if you check it like this there's nothing there 
the way this works is you have to tweak these settings to get uh, things right for your shot uh, for example you have to tweak this focus position um, and uh, you will have to do it in such a way that uh, the point that you're focusing on is completely black all right uh, yes you may you may thought you may have thought that uh, it uh, it should be white but no it's uh, black so I think I'll fix that later uh, uh, by the way it's the first version of this node so I will make changes if you guys tell me some things uh, I know some things to change as well but I would like some uh, okay so I have focused on this rock this big rock here and uh, we have uh, uh, and then now we will use our defocus node all right so just search defocus to actually uh, blur the image and we will plug the our original image in this image uh, input and plug our defocus output into the Z panel okay now uh, if you increase the Z scale you will see something happening and uh, it is blurring uh, the image accordingly and to the focus position that we have set up uh, now um, okay so yeah, as you can see that it has fixed that problem which was happening earlier and uh, this is why it is so awesome because it uh, does a really good job in uh, blurring the foreground uh, but however it has some limitations because it's not a true solution it is uh, it's still a bit of a trade-off but uh, it's still pretty good uh, you should use this uh, instead of the original depth of field if you have a foreground object so I will just show you what I mean if I just increase this uh, very much by a large amount and you will see that it uh, introduces uh, some edge edges uh, in this area where our focus is starting uh, that's because uh, it has only this much of area to blur we have al allowed only this much of area to to blur it but however you can change it uh, it's a bit annoying but you have to go into this depth of field um, into this node and here I have uh, outlined a edge correction and you will only need to change these two to allow itself more room for blurring I will show you just what I mean and uh, all right if I just select this and increase them oh I have increased them too much see it uh, fixes fixes that but it still um, goes beyond that and introduces some blurring in the focus area so that's what I was talking about you have to give it exactly that much room that um, that does not introduce any uh, very noticeable errors in the render so that's one of the major uh, limitations of this um, but uh, now uh, however you can there are some <laughs> there are some advantages of using this for example you can uh, now increase the intensity of the foreground blur, edge blur and uh, decrease it you can also separately uh, blur the foreground and background so you can just uh, disable the background so it won't blur it or you can increase the blur of the background by adding uh, pressing something more than one like four or something so you can do them separately and uh, that's one of the major I think uh, advantages of using this over original depth of field or uh, you may be wondering why I'm be using uh, this Z buffer to do this because if you use our original depth input and uh, Z buffer it will still cause the same problem because it's not actually um, 
blurring the foreground uh, the way it should um and it's very technical you don't need to understand it <laughs> if otherwise the tutorial would be so long um so there's that's pretty much were um that's pretty much all of it so there you go you can just use this node group to achieve all your photorealistic renders and uh, it's much much and uh, i think i think that i'm right but uh, i couldn't find any solution out there for good depth of field in ev and it's a bummer because ev is so much faster um and uh, you can use this in cycles also and it will save you uh, a lot of render time if you're doing animations in cycles uh, then you should definitely use it because uh, it's much better to do this in post processing if you're only uh, reducing yourself 1 minute of render time per frame so you can just uh, decrease a drastic amount of time in your renders now one other fun thing that you can do that is the advantage of doing depth in post processing is you can do anamorphic renders let me show you how okay so the way anamorphic lenses work are they um, they kind of increase the sensor size by uh, two or something and then all of that image is uh, stretched into the into your original um, uh, original uh, resolution and then it's uh, blurred and then it's stretched again so uh, to give that um stretched bokeh look so the way <laughs> it's it's very complicated but uh, the way this works is essentially in this uh, uh dimensions in your uh, in this panel you will just increase the y by 2 and you can see that it has increased the size of our camera in the y direction and but don't worry about it it will not render in this state uh if you render it right now it will only render in 1920 by 1080 or whatever you have chosen and it will squish that into that area now now if you do post processing and in the compositing tab now you can just do what we did and uh oh my god i have to set it again <laughs> but essentially that's what you do and uh, once you are once you are happy with your um depth then you can just um scale it uh, search for a scale node and then scale it into the y by 2 and there you go um if i just okay do this please okay so it takes a bit of time to do all of these processes but essentially it is um it takes a bit time to <laughs> set it oh my god i'm so sorry all right so that's what i'm talking about like it's it's doing that uh, uh oval looking bokeh look and it's a bit jagged but uh, i guess that's the harm of doing photorealistic renders in post processing uh, but um, that's that's that looks very nice if you are if you're just looking from a safe distance um i guess you have to use a different uh, blurring node for this but however i i have used this node a lot in my renders and in my upcoming short film which is taking a lot of time uh it uh that's why i have created this node for uh for my renders but i decided to give it to you guys for free yes but if you can it's on gumroad so you can contribute it if you want so so that's all there is to it guys thank you very much and uh, i'll try to be re recent in uh, my tutorials i I'll, i'll try to be frequent and um now it's in rendering stage so i can relax i can just sit back but no i have to simulate and render my shorts so it's it's still a pain but i'm handling it 
सो दैट्स इट सो थैंक यू गाइज इफ यू लाइक दिस वीडियो प्लीज हिट लाइक एंड इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आई विल आई विल ट्राई माई बेस्ट टू गिव दिस यूजफुल नॉलेज फॉर यू गाइज एंड आई होप दिस विल बी वेरी यूजफुल फॉर यू सो दैट्स इट चाओ थैंक यू सो मच बाय बाय